Boks bo'yicha O'zbekiston erkaklar terma jamoasi birinchi bo'lib to'liq tarkibda. Parij 2024 yo'llanmalarini naqd qildi. Assalomu alaykum, shum bo'lib o'tganing qaddi baland qadrdo onakalari. Akalarim sizlar uchun bomba videolikda bo'ladim. Shu kichkina mehnatimizni qadrlagan holda shu videolikimizga bir dona like bosib qo'ying. Xalqimiz kanalimizga obuna bo'lmagan bo'lsangiz, podpisasi bilan qo'ng'iroq tugmasini bosib qo'ying. Ha, aytgancha videolikimizga like bosish mutlaqo bepul. Italiyaning Bustarisa shahrida boks bo'yicha birinchi jahon lisenziyasi musobaqasi o'z yakuniga yetdi. Unda qatnashgan O'zbekiston terma jamoasi muvaffaqiyatli ishtirok etdi. Parij 2024 yozgi olimpiada o'yinlariga 5 ta yo'llanmani qo'lga kiritdi. Qayd etish joizki, musobaqa davomida 113 ta mamlakatdan faqatgina O'zbekiston va Qozog'iston terma jamoalari 5 ta dan yo'llanmaga ega bo'lishdi. Mezbonlar 4 ta, Polsha jamoasi 3 ta litsenziyani naqd qilgan bo'lsa, yana bir qator mamlakatlar 2 ta va 1 ta, hatto Kubada ham 1 ta yo'llanma bilan uyga qaytadigan bo'ldi. Umumiy hisobda Avstraliya boks bahslari uchun eng ko'p yo'llanma sohibi bo'lib turibdi. Yashil qitta vakillarining 12 nafari, 6 ta erkak va 6 ta ayol a'zosi Parij 2024 ishtirokchisiga aylangan. Biroq jamoaga raqobat deyarli yo'q bo'lgan Akia mintaqasi uchun tashkil etilgan musobaqada litsenziyalarga ega chiqqanini inobatga olish kerak. Qolgan yetakchi jamoalar hisobidagi yo'llanmalar quyidagicha: Braziliya 10 ta, O'zbekiston 9 ta, Fransiya, Italiya 8 ta, Turkiya, Qozog'iston, Xitoy 7 ta yo'llanmani qo'lga kiritishgan. Birinchi jahon litsenziya turniridagi muvaffaqiyatsizlik hozirda Kuba jamoasi inqirozni boshdan o'tkazayotganini yana bir karra ko'rsatdi. Naqd qilib bitta olimpiada o'yinlariga chempionlarni yetishtirib bergan ushbu jamoa hisobida Parij 2024 o'yinlariga hozircha 4 ta litsenziya bor xolos. Qayd etish joizki, Italiyadagi turnirdan so'ng erkaklar jamoamizdagi yo'llanmalar to'liq bo'ldi, 7 ta. Bu borada yana bir ahamiyatli tomoni shundaki, hali hech bir jamoa erkaklar o'rtasidagi barcha vazn toifalarida rejani to'liq bajarmadi. Qizlarimiz hisobida hozircha 2 ta yo'llanma mavjud. Eslatib o'tamiz, O'zbekiston terma jamoasini to'liq tanishtirib o'tsam. 51 kg da Hasan Boydusmatov, 57 kg da Abdumalik Xoloqov, 63.5 kg da Ruslan Abdullayev, 71 kg da Asad Xo'ja Mo'jdin Xo'jayev, 80 kg vaznda Turabek Habibullayev, 92 kg vaznda Lazbek Mullajonov, 92 plus kg vaznda Bahodir Jalolov, 50 kg vaznda Sabina Baboqulova, 54 kg vaznda Nigina Oktamova. Eslatib o'tish joizki, hamyurtimiz Bahodir Jalolovni mana shu Parij 2024 musobaqasida mag'lub etish uchun Kamshibek Konkabayevning murabbiy yangi taktika o'ylab chiqqanini ta'kidlab o'tgan edi. Shu bola tv kanalining qaddi baland qadrdo onakalari, nima deb o'ylaysizlar, Hamyurtimiz Bahodir Jalolov Kamshibek Konkabayev bilan yana bir bor to'qnash kelsa, kim do'stvorlik ko'proq bo'ladi? O'z fikringizni kommentariyada yozib qoldiring. Sizning fikringiz biz uchun o'ta muhim. Ye, akalarim, qani hamyurtlarimizni qo'llab-quvvatlab, kommentariyada olg'a O'zbekiston deb yozib qoldiring va shu videoga bir dona mo'shtin like bosib qo'ying. Aziz va qadrli obunachilar, men bo'lganda ham hamyurtlarimizga omad tilagan holda videolikimizni yakunlasa, agarda sizga videolikimiz ma'qul kelgan bo'lsa, Bahodir Jalolovning zarbasi kabi bitta mo'shtin like bosib qo'ying. Hali hanuz kanalimizga obuna bo'lmagan bo'lsangiz, podpisasi bilan qo'ng'iroq tugmasini bosib qo'ying. Kelgusi videoliklarda ko'rishguncha salomat bo'ling. The, the sort of pro experiences has done to either of them. Uh, it's pretty even in terms of their record, Andy, between them, although in recent events, Jalilov definitely holds the upper hand. Absolutely. They've met in finals twice in this competition, 2017, 2019, the World Championships in 2019 as well, and Jalilov has, has won all of those. Kunkabayev with a win in WSB, uh, winning the quarterfinals of the Worlds in 2017, and the in the Stranger tournament a couple of years before that, so they're very familiar with each other. And it's the third time in a row on this night, in this event, uh, that Jalilov and Kunkabayev have faced off against each other. Jalilov has beaten Kunkabayev on both occasions. I've actually called two out of three of Jalilov, of uh, Kunkabayev's pro contest so far, and I've been really impressed by the way he's been matched and indeed the the way he's fought. So I'm really in interested to see how that experience is, is going to feed into him. You see the size difference uh, immediately. Obviously, Jalilov, the, the taller, southpaw in the red. Maybe that uh, size can work against him with Kunkabayev, who uh, certainly carries a, a bit of a, a thwack, sort of both of them. So looking forward to this one. I saw a huge Uzbek Southpaw super heavyweight of the world youths as well, Jakongi Zokirov. So there must be some kind of formula for growing them back in uh, back in Uzbekistan and, and he looks impressive, just 17 years old. And it's quite simple the way he goes about things, isn't he, Jalilov? He looks for that one-two and he lands it with good effect. And and so often his opponent I think feels that He's too far out to land it, 
but with that reach and that extension he gets it, he somehow gets there. Yeah, he's got pretty good feet also for a big man, I think it's fair to say as well. He's just moving round the centre circle, if you like, and he's just looking, there. watch the, the right hand, he's just kind of waving that distractedly, almost as if he's going to counter the, with a right hook. And it's he's playing the difficulties that Kunkabaya faces, trying to get inside and underneath and then explode if he can. It's, it's getting there, not easy. He did there with the left hand, Andy, but he only did it because Jalilov missed initially. Both of these two with their feet planted fairly wide. You look at Jalilov there and the space between that lead foot, that, that back foot trying to snap that jab and send the left hand in after it. Oh, that's a terrific shot. That was beautiful boxing there from Jalilov, getting on the front foot, trying to not just intimidate, but ask a question of, of Kunkabayev, get him to lead off himself, and he did that, and then he he smacked him with a counter shot, and he did it really eye-catchingly. And has that left eye swelled up immediately? Let's take a look at this. Yeah, it might just be, no, it's okay, just a little nick. I thought there was a, a swelling there, but it was a, a huge shot landed by Jalilov there, the, the best of the fight so far. He's just making Kunkabaya fall short, isn't he, every now and again, and then clipping him with that left hand. Oh, well, he's got a counter referee. I, I mean, there was a shot landed there from Jalilov, and then he almost as Kunkabaya sort of crouched down, whether it was the effect of the shot, making them miss, and then the second making them pay. There's much more concentration on defence, and we saw quite a bit of it. Did you get to see the uh, the, the stumble, the, the knockdown at the end there? Difficult to see with Jalilov's big frame very much in the way of the camera, but uh, it looked as though it might have been something of a push. It, it did look more like a push. It did look more like a push. As we outlined earlier on, the fact that it was, that it was called, won't necessarily do any damage there to to Kunkabayev. That would be extremely bad news in a in a pro ring because that would result in a in a 10-8 round without any question. But that's not the way that the scoring is done in Aiba boxing. It is a better system in in my view in many ways. Just dipping in with that front foot there, Jalalov. That's what he he tries to do, doesn't he? He tries to draw something from Kunkabayev, whoever he's fighting, make them fall short, and then punish them. And when you've got that wide stance, when you've got those feet planted wide, your front foot can be right on top of your opponent, but then you can pull the weight all the way onto the back foot, and it provides this illusion that you're, you're within range because of where your front foot is, but in effect, you're actually not. Well, you can see the, the problems that the the size and stature and technique, range, and the footwork significantly of, of Jalilov. The, the problems that it presents for any kind of fighter around this weight. And there again, for a big guy, the, the head movement and the foot movement there to, to make Kunkabayev miss. And Kunkabayev is, is now swiping and lunging into attacks and an element of frustration creeping in and you can understand why he's been hurt in the, the first round and he's been made to miss in the second being made to miss is well it's twofold isn't it really it's it's slightly demoralizing of course but also it's, it's physically draining punching thin air any fighter will, will tell you that that the missing can can really run that that battery down. Still trying though, and there that that sort of long left hand again. He fired from a from for below the waist, up and round. It seemed to travel a long way. He did manage to make it connect though, Kunkabaya. But a, a rare little bit of success. It's great credit to him that he is 
giving it absolutely everything, and, and well he should and, and might. A little bit more success, tiny bit of success, glimmer. Into the third and final round, final round of the night, and what's been a, a terrific night's entertainment and boxing. Hopefully you've enjoyed so far. Three more minutes to go. Can Kunkabayev unsettle Jalilov? Can he get close to let his hands go? Warning for Jalilov for about punching around the back of the head in the in the clinch. Again, there he's making Kunkabayev miss with the left hand. Just constant tilt of the, the shoulders one way or the other. Just slight movement of the head from Jalilov. All the while the, the feet are circling too as he lets hand the left hand go. really stepped into that left hand too maybe the balance just deserted him a bit so he he followed it onto the shoulder but it just gives you an idea because we were kind of side onto that of just how how far out he can be and still look for that left hand tell you what he walked onto a very short left though from Kunkabayev those are the moments if he misses these are the, the times when he might just be vulnerable Kunkabayev still trying to find a way. The, the pace is dropping. You know, I think it's, it's fair to say the big guys, particularly Jalilov, and maybe just slowing down a little. Another left hand getting in there from Kunkabayev. He's got that punch off slightly better in this final round. Things have improved for him, really, since that opening round. That was a bit of a, a damaging one for him, that first three minutes. And I think I said at the end of that round that there were ominous signs but he's shown his grit since then and no little skill to to lessen that gap between these two yeah jalalo has been quieter hasn't he in the last sort of three four minutes or so couldn't quite time kunkabaya that that time around lead right hand there though from Jalilov and as you said, the pace has dropped towards the end of the third and final round. Kunkabai have just caught by the left hand again there as he careered forward, somewhat out of control. Well, Jalilov looked like he, he might be in total control after the first round. He won silver medal, otherwise it's been gold tonight for the Uzbek team. Are they going to grab another one or is Kazakhstan going to get on the board? The winner by unanimous decision in the red corner representing Uzbekistan.